Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm very pleased to be here, and it's great to be at an affordable housing investment summit. Um, Anu, can I just ask you to pop up the, the photo? That would be lovely, thank you. So, um, one of the first things I was struck by when I got here and I got um, the materials that we were given was that in the materials we're given for the affordable housing summit, um, there's a lot of swimming pools in those materials. And I don't know how much you can see in the photo, but I've got some swimming pools in this photo as well. But what I really want to focus on is the fact that what's happening on this side of the photo, rather than the swimming pool side of the photo. That's a photo from, from Dar es Salaam. Um, as Neil said, I'm Ian Shapiro. I'm the chief executive at Real. We're a, an innovator and an investor in affordable homes. And what I want to do in the next 15 minutes is talk to you about the evidence we've got that there is a commercially viable opportunity in affordable housing. And we've heard that this morning already. And when we say affordable housing, we mean $10,000. And we've got evidence that supports this across 14 countries in Africa and Asia. Um, the first thing I want to do is introduce you to a woman called Nerissa. Uh, Nerissa's in her late 30s. She wears um, colorful kikois. Uh, and she supplements her income by um, making mandazis or, or donuts in her home. Um, and they were the same kind of style that we had as we were registering this morning. And the reason I want to talk to you about Nerissa is I only met her last year. Um, but she came to Nairobi for the first time 20 years ago, which was the first time I came to Nairobi as well. And I remember my experience. I got picked up at the airport. I got taken um, to my to my home where I would, I would live for a few years, and I can shut my eyes, and I'm going to ask you all to do this in a minute, and if I shut my eyes, I can vividly remember what happened as I entered that home. It was a, a stone's throw from here. In, those of you who know Nairobi, it was in Kilimani, um, and it was peaceful and tranquil. There were trees, there was lots of bird life, and it was just a very calm, atmosphere and it was great and I thought this this is a this is a great place so what I want you to do because we're a firm believer in audience participation is I'd like you all to shut your eyes and think about where you lived 20 years ago so I can see all of you even at the back so I'd like you to shut your eyes and think about where you lived 20 years ago What was the view from that, from that home? Now, there'll be loads of different stories in this room, different continents, different cities, different settings. But I can tell you that, from the faces I can see, there was a lot of smiling going on when people were remembering their home of 20 years ago. A lot of smiling, thinking about what a, a warm place it was to be. I tried to imagine what it was like for Nerissa when she first came to Nairobi 20 years ago. When she came, she lived in a space that started about here, finished about here, and had a curtain here which separated her from another family. That was her experience. And I ask myself, as we fast forward 20 years, how much has changed? We know there's 1.2 billion people who don't have secure shelter. There's 900 million of them living in slums. And that's a lot of people. And our evidence shows that you can support someone like Nerissa at an affordable level. You can break the cycle of poverty for her. You can make the developer have a new market and you can deliver a profit for the investor. And I want us all to think about Nerissa as we talk about the rest of today 
and the rest of our time together. If we take a long sweep of history, I've just taken us back 20 years to Nerissa's first time she got, got to this city. Actually, the first city, the first urban area, um, existed 6,500 years ago. Um, and it took humanity 5,000 years for 1% of the population to live in urban areas. So it took 5,000 years, so you had one in every 100 people in an urban area, 99 in a rural setting. It took another 1,400 years to go from one person living in, um, one person out of 100 living in an urban area to 20. So 6,500 years to get 20 people out of 100 people living in urban areas. That takes us to 1920, 100 years ago. Today, you know all these statistics. There's 54 people out of 100 living in urban areas. That acceleration is rapid, and it's growing fast. And if we project forward, we can see that's going to happen. There are 475 people who call Nairobi home today that did not call Nairobi home yesterday. There'll be 475 of them tomorrow as well. Not just Nairobi, 500 in Abuja, 950 in Dar es Salaam, 1,200 in Lagos. And that story is replicated across the continent. And that 1.2 billion people we talked about who have inadequate shelter now, in 10 years, the projections, if we carry on business as usual, is that will be three billion people. Three billion people living on that side of that picture. But it doesn't need to be like that. It doesn't need to be Nerissa's experience. Of those three billion people, of that growth, 90% is going to happen in Africa and Asia. So this is the opportunity, this is the space, this is what matters. And our evidence is clear that an affordable home, a genuinely affordable home, can be delivered in a commercially viable way at $10,000. In fact, in, in Kenya, it's considerably less than that. But across our portfolio, $10,000 delivers the investor a return, delivers the developer a market, and delivers the poor person a life-changing, poverty-cycle-breaking opportunity. So what happened to Nerissa? So Nerissa, working with our Kenyan partner, Nachu, got to move out of that very unpleasant slum situation. And for the same amount she was paying in rent, she got to move to a two-bedroom house with running water and electricity, somewhere safe for her daughter to go to the toilet at night to play outside. And that's for the same amount that she was paying the rent in the slum. The people we're talking about for affordable housing, they're paying rent every month. We're not talking about people who live on the streets, who live under bridges. Obviously, there is people that, and they need support. But what we're talking about here is a mass market, a 300 million affordable home market in the next 10 years that we need to get down at the $10,000 point. And it can be done. And we are happy to share that open source data with anyone who wants it. What we'd love is we're an investor and we invest in developers and we work with the whole ecosystem like a, a venture capitalist. But what we'd love, we'd love you to come and work with us. We'd be really happy to get your advice. It would be great if you wanted to take all of our data and prove to us that you could do it better than us, cheaper than us, faster than us. We'd love you to kick us out of a market because you're doing such a brilliant job. Because this is a huge opportunity, a huge commercially viable opportunity that we need to take. And the evidence is clear that that can be delivered. And I just want us all to think about those opportunities that when you closed your eyes and you smiled about where you lived 20 years ago, and you think about what Nerissa's experience was when she got here 20 years ago, what the choices are within our hands to take that opportunity to get into the $10,000 home market. And when we close our eyes in 2030, we feel hugely proud about what we've been able to achieve to reach that 300 million affordable homes. Thanks very much.